What's up, Trekkies? Hi. So, this is kind of a supplemental video. Um, has nothing to do with real news. Um, I've seen a lot of people complain and talk about, on various forums, about the Cation Aatrox Carrier. Or as I call it, the Kitty Crate because Cations are cat people, and carriers are also kennels, are also crates. Um, mine, my old cat, he's, he's gone now, but his name was Shadow. He was a black cat, and he did not like his kennel whatsoever. So his crate was a prison to him. That's why my ship is called Shadow's Prison, because it's a kitty crate. It's also easier than saying a Cation Aatrox carrier. I know I'm not giving it justice, but it's still fun to say. As you can see, my bar is a mess, because I'm used to using a 4x10. That's 40 abilities, yes, with my Vesta. With this, I'm not using that many more abilities. So, as you can see, I'm missing 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Missing 8 abilities. I've also got f all 4 of my batteries on this bar. I've checked. I'm not missing anything on my bars. So, yeah. Part of it is the fact that the Vesta has like six usable consoles that are all abilities, so that's where most of my things went. Plus set bonuses. To go on a quick overview of the ship, it is tier 5U, I fully upgraded it. It's just got regular carrier mastery of quick deployment, armored hull, reactive shield technology, advanced shield subsystem. I'm mainly using phaser, prolonged engagement, quantum phase, because quantum phase draining. I'll explain why in a second. And then I've got super phaser, omnidirectional phaser in the back, kinetic cutting beam, because that's awesome. I've not fully upgraded that, and people are going to complain in the comments. And then my omnidirectional anti caronton infuse, it's tetra on damage. I wanted another omni beam, and that was one of them in my inventory. And I hate anti proton. So, what am I using on this ship? Well, General stat boosting consoles. Nothing super powerful, nothing super great. Uh, mainly because it's helped to get the engine subsystem power up a little bit so this thing can move because uh, it's a boat. It, it moves like a cruiser. <laughs> so zero point energy console for more power to the subsystems and draining. Nukara console for draining exotic particle generators and shield setting plus accuracy to beams. When you're using this many beams, all the accuracy counts, especially when you're using beam fire at will. Since now that they've been open to all things, I'm using the three temporal consoles. The Mannheim device, which is weird looking. The Tipler cylinder, not as weird looking, but still watching a ship back up like that. Hmm. It's like the paradox almost. And then the paradox's console, the temporal rift stabilizer. Benefit to this one has a passive of 15% flight turn rate. Awesome. So here's the quantum phase for the, so it's bonus 25% phaser damage. That's why I'm using phasers mainly is because that. Plasmonic leech, awesome. I'm constantly draining. I couldn't find something else to put in there. The generalized our exotic particle field exciter with control expertise. We just haven't really upgraded it. And then the shielded, temporarily shielded data core just to give extra resistances, because the ship's a little weak. Not that weak, but a little weak. Weaker than a lot of people would think. And then I've got the this, because the anti-chroniton focusing emitters is 13.3% tetrion damage, and I do have one tetrion beam. But the aux power setting, the maximum shield capacity, is what I was looking for. Mm, crit chance based on aux power level, mm, and 3% shield resistance, that's always beneficial. So that bonus tetrion damage, it's like, me can't be that bad. Now for the fighters, obviously I'm using Stalker fighters. They're amazing, but I'm using the elite ones because every time I get a new ship that has new fighters, I always go to the fleet and I buy the elite versions because I usually, well, not right away. Sometimes I'm low on dilithium because the fleet needs it. But these have Tetrion pulse cannons, dual Tetrion cannons, Thoron generators, which have a chance of just knocking aux power offline. And I've seen that when I was in the Badlands with this thing once and the nebulas came in and one of the little Thoron generator things hit the nebula and his <laughs> the TBR stopped. I was like, that's how you do it. 
<laughs> and then all the rest of them like, there's just 12 of these guys. You'll see once I get to the combat area. Uh, Anti-proton sweep. If you ever wonder what that is, that's the red thing that kind of does this. It's a shield shredder. It's awesome. Uh, battle cloak and hull signature mask. So they're relatively not targeted because they're hull signatures masked. Um, traits I'm using for starship traits, just because I kind of needed to tweak a little bit. I'm using improved nonlinear progression. I just, I love it. I love backing up and not having a power drain and be able to heal myself. Works really well in some, in a lot of instances. Um, time to kill comes from the Anorax. It's mostly about science bridge officer abilities and bonus all damage. Unstable anomalies, not really useful on this ship because all I use is Tyken's Rift, but on my other, on my vest, I use Gravity Well and Tyken's Rift. And so things get interesting. I'm trying to figure out how to get timeline collapse in there, but uh, greedy emitters because I use so much draining. I have Tachyon Beam and Tyken's Rift on this ship, so I'm always using greedy emitters. It's from the Nandi. And then because of this ship and needing the fighters, I picked up scramble fighters. Usually I've got a different trade in there, but this one I'm like, yeah, we should probably use scramble fighters. It will be better. So that's pretty much what I'm using. The rest of the traits, the, uh, the rest of the space traits are very, very centered around me being a science officer, not what ship I'm using. So that's that. We are going to move over here to the middle zone with the big spire in the middle, not the Undine zone. So we will, sh I will get everything set up and I will show you, see how this slow this thing turns. I mean, I'm a little grumbly by it, but it's not that big a deal. As you can see, it goes 30.4. I mean, I could full impulse to like 210, but mm, I'll see you guys over in the combat zone. All right, now I've launched all my fighters, put them on attack mode. You can kind of see them all back there. There's a lot of them. My Vesta runs just one hangar bay, so I'm, uh, hmm. All right. Come on, guys, keep up. So I'm gonna head over to the Allied General Control Tower. Allied Area Control Tower, whatever. People are, con looks like people are at the Wasteland Tower right now, but. As I've been here for a while launching my fighters and getting everything ready. So you're gonna wanna probably, you're gonna, you guys are gonna see how well this thing performs in relative combat. It's not the greatest combat because it's not an elite queue. It's also not a basic queue. This is just general world zone stuff. But as a carrier, and a lot of people try to fly their carriers like they would a normal ship. But the, pro the issue is you need to fly like a carrier. It's not there to be a battleship. You need your, you work with your fighters to an extent. The problem is a lot of people like to move around and get their ship to work really well with, with like supplementing with their fighters. And with a carrier, in fact, with all of them, you gotta be a little bit more give and take. If you got one bay, sure, put everything on your ship. But if you got two bays, really, you gotta, you gotta help with your, you gotta help out your fighters a lot more. So just to give you an idea with scramble fighters, every time you hit launch fighters, so my shift one and shift two abilities, you scramble fighters activate. So if you activate them both at the same time, it's a little stupid. So if I hit shift one, they all go immune for five seconds and get like 5% bonus damage and they get healed too. So now that they, now that fighters themselves don't take damage from warp core breaches, they can live a little bit longer. So I typically park away from things like about seven kilometers, because as a as a science officer, I've got the long range targeting skill pretty high. <laughs> Yay, maneuver bonus. Still, in, mm, see they're capping industrial facilities right now. And I'm thinking any moment now, the allied tower is gonna come under attack. So we'll just fast forward to when that happens. Okay, 
Apparently, they have not showed up, so we are about ready to ha start having Voth Citadel ships. Okay, let's crank this little guy around. Oh, come on, guys, get in my butt. They cloak when they when you recall them. Just letting you know. Oh, hello. Now they showed up. Just, just letting you see, this is the fighters. Lost both of my fighters doing that. That's cool. As long as you just keep spawning fighters. That's the thing people don't do with the... They, they don't... They don't keep spawning fighters. They just... They're like, oh, my fighters died. What do I do? You keep spawning them. You hit... You alternate between shift one. For me, alternate. They, there's the Mannheim device. Come on, guys. Bulwark Battleship. Viral Matrix 3! Wom, 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 wom. I mean, I'm just showing you guys. I'm not doing anything special other than picking up a, a ton of items. But I've just defended a tower with the kitty crate. I mean, we've got, you know, overall control happening with the... Uh... Alright, so we've got this control going. Let's go get... Some Voth fleets. Should I get out of combat? I only hit recall so that they follow me better. Because with scramble fighters, you heal them with that. I do not remember where scatter scramble fighters came from, but if you're gonna be using a carrier a lot, it's a great starship trait to pick up. Alright. Here's the first one. Set you guys on attack vector. There we are. There you go. Once they get within 15, they'll actually start attacking it, so... They'll start seeing it. Guys! Get in here! Oops. Hey guys, what are you doing? Come on. If you need to pop them both at the same time, do it. Oh, no. Oh, man, am I... Continuity proc and I'm temporal backstepping. Fun, fun. side. They still reflect upon themselves. The Voth are probably not the greatest thing for fighters, but we're getting the idea that this thing is not a terabad, as terabad ship as people say it is. It's certainly not the most elite. But I'm certainly, you know, holding my own pretty decently 
kind of solo if you think about it. Now, I mean, now people are joining me. And again, as long as you stay kind of broadsiding, you're really good. Oh, Citadel ship going down. I do not turn well. Wait, back up, back up, back up, back up, back up. Back up, back up, back up. There we are. This is so slow. Watch as my fighters go in at this thing. Watch the top of the screen. Ah. Oh. Targeting the subsystems is really effective. Getting something back here. <laughs> okay, guys. Form up on me. Let's go. You can talk to your fighters. It's fine. Go ahead. Talk to them. They need love, too. Not something that's going to immediately immune itself. Sell some shield power. Come on. Eh, Palisade, that works. Any close enough? Just keep launching fighters. Just keep watching fire. Movies. Make me temporal backstab. Fine. Continuity. Love you. I love you so much. Viral Matrix. Then the graphical glitch that happens with Temporal Backstab. Fun, fun. It looks like you move backwards, but you don't. Temporal Fracture is always awesome. More shield power.
we blow up the big ship? No. And there's a big ship down there. No, nope, people are going after that one. Let's go into backup mode. Come on. It's exactly what we do. Oh man. Got me into combat. Yeah, I'm fully aware. Drain your shields. Stop you from moving. Nope, nope. Not gonna take your taking any crap today. Come on, city ship. Let's go. Two fleets because we haven't taken out all the little buddies yet. Well, hello there. Giant explosion. Only half of you have cloaked. So now we need to go find the stragglers. I hate how long I stay in combat sometimes. And I think to go, I swear it's my fighters. Nice to know we have a. Uh, Then Kathy thing here, but you know, it's the Zelbinian instead. Farscape. I mean, their fleet, their name, their ship name is all Farscape, so. Yeah, you! They usually like to hang around back here, is what I noticed. Aha! Not saying I have great DPS on a kitty crate, but my fighters do. That didn't even qualify as one. Oh, hello. What do you got? Oh, <laughs> they found a, f a repair ship. That's the thing about fighters. They mm, they find a repair ship and they show no mercy. We got two things down here. Fighters, go get it. Come on, guys. Where are you at? You guys are in the process. They'll get here. Here they come. There we are. Now what am I shooting at? No help from me. All fighters. 
I'm, I'm just keeping myself alive while they blast the crap out of it. Stalker fighters are not to be messed with. I mean, they've got anti-proton sweep and Thoron pulse on that thing. It is. Oh, it's draining my shields. Palisade? Bye-bye. I'm not even in range. Now let's actually help them out for my last little trick. Sit down. Does he just constantly spawn here? Awesome. I'm gonna have to get out of here because I'm just gonna keep fighting things. They're just constantly spawning. <laughs> I'm just gonna slowly back away. I'll, we'll, we'll, we'll do an after thing when I get out of combat here. Okay, finally got out of combat. That took entirely too long to get out of combat. Because the fighters kept wanting to shoot everything. Finally got out of combat and I transwarped to the fleet research lab, so. Unable to equip some items from loadout. Yeah, we know the general issue. All right. So, all in all, the Kitty Crate is not a bad ship. I understand that I have highly upgraded gear and I have some temp and I have the temporal consoles which not everybody has. But even without the three temporal consoles, a lot of these things are pretty easy to a lot of these consoles are pretty easy to get. And upgrading gear is just upgrading gear. That's just how it works. But the thing to remember is you have to play this thing like a carrier. You cannot play this thing like an escort or even a science vessel as much as I try to play it like a science vessel because it has a Commander Science, Lieutenant Commander Science, makes me think science, yes. But it's, you gotta think a little bit more defensively. I, cool, if you wanna use a gravity well on this, suck everything in, have all your fighters and fight everything nearby so they don't have to spread out. But again, kinda on your play style, that's that. I would not, this thing, you can put cannons on this, but again, it's turn rate sucks. Just, just go with beams and tactical team. I mean, there isn't, I mean, the, the after battle report is the fact that I only, my, I only procced quant continuity twice doing all of that. Continuity, for those that don't know, it's a temporal operative, it's in temporal operative, it's way down here at the bottom. Continuity, 
When reduced less than 10% of your hull, you will immediately be removed from danger. Your ship will teleport approximately 8 kilometers from the current location, become briefly untargetable, and have its hull and shields restored by a large amount. This action will also wipe the accumulated threat versus NPCs. It is a... yes. Down here, temporal adaptation. The adjustment period, which is listed before, no longer applies when continuity is triggered. The adjustment period is... Uh, also causes adjustment period, which is minus 80% all damage for 20 seconds, minus 66.7% flight speed for 20 seconds. But after that, after you get temporal adaptation too, that adjustment period doesn't apply. So basically you teleport backwards and you are fine, but fully healed. This can only occur once every three minutes. So also causal glitch when, bridge, when continuity is triggered, all bridge officer abilities that are currently in cooldown will have their remaining recharge by 50%. Continuity's really cool. But it only had to proc twice, which means I was low enough in in hull. And I hope this helps you guys make a decision if you want to buy the kitty crate. Uh, since there's no console or mastery involved, you can go ahead and get the fleet version. So you have extra hull and stuff. That's the thing, you don't have to worry about getting it from... So, since there is no console and no Starship Mastery, you can just get the Fleet Cation Aatrox Carrier and then upgrade that. Because you'll have bonus stuff getting the Fleet version. And you can just get invited to various fleets and get all that stuff. So, hopefully... Sorry for this really long video, but I really wanted to make a good, solid case to why the Kitty Crate is not terrible. It's actually really good if you know how to work with its design. And if you try to fly it like a quick little speedy escort or smaller cruiser, you know, smaller science vessels, probably not gonna work. But if you play it like a giant cruiser that has a bunch of little buddies helping it out, awesome. And that's what I'm doing with that. Okay, so if you have any questions about the kitty crate, ask them below. That'll be everything from me. I'll catch you guys on my next case for another ship or next week for Trek Tuesday.